Cataract surgery has evolved to become highly efficient and predictable. Obviously, the patients have very high expectations of a good outcome. Most patients neither understand nor are willing to accept the complications after cataract surgery. Imagine a situation in which you have operated on a cataract patient and next day he or she presents with post-cataract surgery ptosis. How would you react to that? More importantly, what should you do to avoid any such complications happening at all? In this video, we will discuss why patients develop ptosis after cataract surgery. We will also discuss some of the ways to prevent these complications. But first we would like you to subscribe the channel so that you may not miss our new videos. You may also share the video with those who may like this topic. Check the description for similar videos and product links. Ptosis can occur after any ocular surgery. It has been reported in many scientific publications. Some of the studies say that incidence of ptosis after cataract surgery can be as high as 13%. There could be many reasons for ptosis to happen after the cataract surgery. Most commonly it is either the injection of anesthetic agent or the eye speculum used for opening the eyelids. First and probably the most common is myogenic ptosis. It is typically caused by congenital dysgenesis of the levator muscle or an acquired muscular dystrophy. In post-surgical myogenic ptosis, direct damage to the levator muscle may be due to the process of injecting anesthetic into the muscle or myotoxic effects of the anesthesia. Second is the aponeurotic ptosis. It is a disinsertion or dehiscence of the levator aponeurosis from its normal position on the anterior surface of tarsus. The use of a bridal suture or rigid eyelid speculum has been implicated in cataract surgery as a cause of aponeurotic damage. This is followed by neurogenic ptosis, which is a disruption of the innervation of the muscle. In the case of post-surgical ptosis it may be due to the prolonged effects of anesthetic on the neuromuscular junction. This may also be caused by susceptibility of anteriorly located terminal twigs of the oculomotor nerve to local anesthesia infiltrated in the eyelid. And the mechanical ptosis. It occurs when a mass causes downward pull on the upper eyelid. In postoperative ptosis this may be due to edema or hematoma formation in the eyelid. Finally, traumatic ptosis is due to blunt or sharp trauma to the levator aponeurosis. Most of the time, the ptosis is transient. It usually improves over time and is often caused by eyelid edema, hematoma formation, foreign body reaction, ocular inflammation and anesthesia effects. Postoperative edema is probably the most common cause of transient ptosis. Most cases of eyelid edema will resolve within 48 to 72 hours. It rarely persists past 10 days after surgery. Hematoma formation is usually secondary to local injection. Ocular massage or compression after injection can limit its formation. Resorption of a hematoma can cause fibrosis and adhesions between the orbital septum and levator aponeurosis and create persistent ptosis. Foreign body reaction is often ignored as a cause of ptosis. In extracapsular cataract surgery, nylon sutures can erode through overlying conjunctiva and cause inflammation and edema in the eyelid. Ocular inflammation and surface irritation after surgery also create a transient, reactive ptosis. With correction of the inflammation using topical steroid eye drops or oral steroids, the edema and ptosis resolve. Transient ptosis can also occur as a direct response to the neuromuscular blockade of the levator muscle. Choice of anesthetic can determine the duration of ptosis, lidocaine having a shorter duration than bupivacaine. If ptosis persists past the neuromuscular effects of the anesthetic, one must suspect the myotoxic effects of anesthesia. Some of these cases of ptosis are persistent. It is usually because of damage to the levator aponeurosis or scarring to the levator complex. Direct damage to the muscle via toxic effects of anesthesia or trauma from direct injection of the muscle usually resolves with regeneration of the muscle. Dehiscence or detachment of the levator aponeurosis from the tarsal plate is something that does not remedy itself. Therefore, this form of ptosis does not improve over the postoperative period. Intervention Now the important question is what to do? But before that, the more important question is when to intervene? After a thorough examination in which the etiology is determined, one must decide whether to intervene or not. 
In most cases, these ptosis resolved with time, and therefore observation is the most prudent form of intervention. As in other forms of traumatic ptosis, this form of ptosis typically improved within six months. Few surgeons have reported the spontaneous resolution of these ptosis even after 11 months and suggest observing these ptosis for one year. Ptosis surgery. Ptosis that does not resolve is typically secondary to aponeurotic dehiscence. This is repaired surgically. However, prior to considering surgical intervention, one must determine whether the patient is seriously affected by the ptosis. In one study, only 18% of patients with postoperative ptosis noticed a change in their eyelid position. Finally, plans for cataract surgery in the other eye have to be determined. If a patient is planning ocular surgery in the other eye, surgical intervention for ptosis should be delayed, since the second eyelid is at similar risk for postoperative ptosis. There are two surgical options for addressing ptosis after ocular surgery. Repair via an external approach through the late crease. Repair of the aponeurotic dehiscence or a transconjunctival approach with neurectomy for minimal ptosis. The repair of the aponeurotic dehiscence is more logical since it directly addresses the underlying cause. External levator resection through the anatomic late crease addresses all these problems. However, for minimal ptosis of 1 to 2 mm, a murectomy may be appropriate. Prevention Prevention of post-surgical ptosis is an essential part of modern ocular surgery. Even if a patient obtains excellent vision from cataract surgery, post-surgical ptosis is a serious functional and cosmetic concern. Therefore, the importance of preventing this problem cannot be emphasized enough. And prevention is not that difficult to practice either. The choice of anesthesia can determine whether the elevator is exposed to risk of developing ptosis or no. Topical anesthesia eliminates all problems with local anesthesia including hematoma and edema of the eyelid and myotoxic effects on the levator. If eyelid akinesia is needed, a nutbath retroauricular block is better than a van lint eyelid block. If ocular akinesia is required, a theoretical advantage may exist with peribulbar versus retrobulbar anesthesia. But few authors are of view that there is not much difference between these two forms of anesthesia. If you do after injecting the anesthetic agent in the eye, it may decrease the amount of eyelid edema and hematoma formation, but may increase the amount of anesthesia available for myotoxicity. The use of hyaluronidase is also controversial, it may limit the amount of anesthesia volume needed but may increase the distribution of anesthesia around the levator complex. The choice of surgical technique for cataract surgery also determines exposure to risk factors for these doses. If you are an efficient surgeon, you can limit the total surgical time for the procedure. It can theoretically reduce eyelid complications secondary to ocular inflammation or compressive effects of prolonged use of a late speculum. Try to avoid the bridal sutures or the use of a rigid speculum, if possible. If a bridal suture is necessary for fixating the globe, direct visualization of the superior rectus with dissection through conjunctiva and tenon capsule during placement of the bridal suture are advisable. Alternatively, you can consider episcleral or corneal traction sutures to keep the globe fixed. It is wise to use a flexible wire speculum or one with adjustable blades to limit the spreading tension on the eyelids. If a rigid speculum is not avoidable, eyelid akinesia with anesthesia might limit aponeurotic damage. Surgical technique may also decrease the incidence of ptosis. One study found a higher incidence of ptosis in extracapsular cataract extraction versus phacoemulsification. emulsification. This difference may be due to a larger conjunctival flap and scleral incision which increases the likelihood of post-op inflammation. With the advent of temporal, clear corneal surgery, these factors are reduced. One can also speculate that the superior approach to surgery may have a greater risk of ptosis compared to a temporal approach. Conclusion Ptosis after cataract surgery should be recognized as a potentially serious complication which is very much preventable. If you understand the causes of ptosis after cataract surgery, you can easily prevent its occurrence with careful surgical planning. Even then if it presents after surgery, you can very well determine when, and if, surgical intervention is indicated. 
Later is possible via a thorough clinical examination. Finally, you must educate patients about its possibility as a complication in routine ocular surgery. Hope you liked the video. Feel free to share your views on this issue in the comment section. Check the description for similar videos and product links.